What's up, Cheerios? It's James here, and welcome back to the my MCU worst to best countdown. Uh, we are up to seven and eight, and today we're, we're starting with number seven. Uh, is the Incredible Hulk? Now this was two thousand eight. Uh, our fifty two minutes didn't technically uh, connect to the MCU until uh, Iron Man came out and they were like, oh, we've got um, a winning formula here, we might as well uh, bring it in. Um, this was the second iteration of uh, Bruce Banner, so Edward Norton, who in my opinion, I think he did a really great job as uh, Bruce Banner. Uh, Liv Tyler, Tim Roth, William Hurt, Tim Blake Nelson, and uh, <laughs> Lou Ferrigno, he showed up. He, he's always the Incredible Hulk in a way. Um, and yes, this was um, basically Bruce Banner was on the run. He he was living overseas, trying to control his temper, trying to uh, see gurus about it and all that stuff and everything. Um, as a standalone, this is really good. As part of the MCU, it's very shoddy if they actually thought about it. Um, <clears throat> uh, directed by Louis Louis Leterre. Sorry, my bad. Uh, oh, he did the Transporter and the Brothers Grimm. Okay, he has a pretty good career, apart from Clash of the Titans. But we won't talk about that. <laughs> um. But yeah, uh, the Stanley cameo was um, uh, pretty good in this one, uh, although kind of disgusting because he drank Hulk's blood. It's like, ew, that's gross. Um, but the yeah, uh, it had some great action. It was it was kind of uber violent because uh, as. Tim Roth was a mouthy fucking soldier and he's like, oh, what, you're going to hit me? And Hulk fucking kicked him into a tree that broke all his bones. It's like, you did kind of ask. Okay. Um, but yeah, out of the MCU, like, uh, like, uh, it's, like I said, it, uh, as a standalone, it's good. It's better than uh, Thor, in my opinion. Um, and... All what and all that I've done so far, uh, but yeah, um, <clears throat> and the Incredible Hulk, it was, and it was always awesome to see like Hulk. You're like what? Smash girl! I was like sweet, <laughs> um, and there we go, and. Um, and number eight is Ant-Man and the Wasp. This was funny. Uh, 2018, hour 58 minutes. Uh, Peyton Reed. I don't, I don't mind Peyton Reed. He's a pretty good uh, director. He did the first Ant-Man. He did Bring It On. He's done a few. Uh, he did Yes Man. So when uh, he was up for Ant-Man... I was just like, I trust him. Like, he w like I would have liked to see how Edgar Wright would have done it, but um, kind of everything you want. But um, <clears throat> so Ant Man and the Wasp, two thousand eighteen, hour fifty eight minutes. Uh, Paul Rudd, Evangeline, the chick from Lost. Michael Penner, who is fucking hilarious in this. Walter Goggins, uh. Um, Hannah, John Ka Cameron, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer, Lawrence Fishburne, Michael Douglas. Um, yes, and for some reason, Randall Park is in this. I don't know why, but he doesn't need to be in everything. I know he's a funny man, but okay. Um, but yes, as a sequel, it didn't do what I wanted it to do. Uh, it was funny. It had its moments. I felt Walter Goggins was a wasted time because he didn't do much. Um, he wasn't much of a threat as the bad guy. Uh, but we did get a backstory of S.H.I.E.L.D. and their, and the, or uh, uh, back of the day S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, how they were 
um, making uh, Ghost and how she fucked up and all that. She's like, oh, shit. It's like, oh, damn, okay. Um, which is good, which is what we needed. Um, hopefully, we didn't need to watch S.H.I.E.L.D. up until that point to get what was being shown, if that makes sense. Uh, <clears throat> Michelle Pfeiffer, oh, she looks good in this. Um, rumor had it that she was, she's supposed to be turning for the X-Men now because of how much time she spent in the, um, in the, uh, what would you call it? The particle place. And, uh, the end credit scene is crucial to, uh, after Infinity War, because you watch it and then... And um, Michelle Fiverr's like, oh, go get caught in the time stream. I'm like, wow, you're wanking that for all it's worth. It's like, it's going to involve time travel, isn't it? I'm like, Michelle Fiverr doesn't know subtlety. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, like, um, it has moments. Uh, it's set up uh, Infinity War slash um, Endgame so well uh, as... Uh, a man wasn't affected, but his whole family was. You're like, fuck, he's stuck in the time stream and you can't fucking get him out. Um, it's like, holy fucking shit, how, how is he going to get out? And it's like, uh, but then the end game comes and it'll get all the answers, but none of that quite yet. Um, <clears throat> but yeah. Uh, but no, this, I like, with the MCU, this was, they could have made it better. There was so much potential. They had, um, they they kind of worked because there's Ant Man and the Wasp, two Ant Mans, two Wasps because, uh, and it like looks so trippy and all that stuff. But no, it it should have do got done better. But um, but yes. So what do you guys think of uh, number seven and eight today? Um, seven and eight. Seven and eight, yes, seven and eight with the Incredible Hulk and Ant Man and the Wasp. Did you enjoy them more than what I have? And um, if need be, where are they on your list? Um, uh, yes, like, share, subscribe, and remember, um, Avengers Fallen, stay silent.